Hey guys, Congresswoman Kat Kamak here, and it is about 20 until 8 Eastern time, and I'm here in my office. Um, been getting ready for State of the Union, finishing up some paperwork, and was getting ready to head down to the Capitol to um, get ready for State of the Union. So I wanted you to walk with me, and uh, we can catch up a little bit. But tonight is the very first State of the Union for Biden in a president's first year. He does not actually give a State of the Union address because he has just uh, assumed the office. So now that we are officially um, a year in, this is uh, his first official State of the Union. So um, <laughs> I have been doing a ton of media and talking about my thoughts on what the State of the Union is going to be. And I, just remember, I mean, the State of the Union is supposed to be the crowning achievement of the prior year for an administration and then a look ahead from, for what's to come, you know, painting the vision of that administration. Now, maybe I'm just too blunt, but Every single reporter who has asked me about my expectations and what I think this speech is going to be, I have been quick to tell them that I think this is going to be the shortest speech in American history because I do not believe that there is a single achievement that Biden can hang his hat on from the last year. He has nothing but crisis and, um, and chaos around him everywhere he goes. That's all he leaves. And I think the look ahead is pretty bleak for this administration. All indications point to the fact that he is going to basically double, triple, quadruple down on the Build Back Better, I call it Build Back Broke, agenda. Uh, he's going to really focus on finding ways to push their control and dependency agenda on America. We can uh, talk about the fact that foreign policy has fallen apart under this administration. And it's just been a real, real shame um, that all of the incredible work that President Trump and his administration had done uh, was being dismantled and continues to be dismantled by this administration for no other reason than they don't like Donald Trump. So it's really, really frustrating. Um, and I think tonight you're going to hear a lot of fluff. I think you're going to hear a lot of empty promises and a lot of smoke being blown up our skirts. So my expectations are very low. I think of course, with everything going on with the Ukrainian situation with Russia invading Ukraine, we are gonna hear a lot in the realm of foreign policy. And if, if Biden opens up with that, I think he should start with an apology because quite frankly, we are here today in large part because of the weakness exhibited by Joe Biden. Make no mistake about it, there has been mistake after mistake after mistake out of this administration where he thinks that diplomacy um, is backing down and, and cowering to other nations. I liken it to Putin playing chess, Biden playing checkers, and they're using Eastern Europe as the chessboard. And it's really, really heartbreaking for not just Ukrainians, but people around the world. I mean, we saw the most botched withdrawal play out in Afghanistan where Americans were not only left behind, but killed. Servicemen and women who did not need to, uh, did not need to die, they did because of Biden's incompetence. And that incompetence is on full display right now across the globe, where our allies don't know if they can depend on us and our enemies sure as heck don't fear us or even respect us. So it's been a really, really frustrating um, uh, year. I know you guys are feeling it right along with me too. And this is why it is so important that we take the house back in November. I have full confidence and I do believe that we will take the house back in a red wave that has never been seen before. So I just, I, I know that you guys are 
um, just as frustrated as I am. And there's been a lot of talk about, you know, I'm not going to watch the dress. I'm not going to do that. Listen, this is not a time to pull back. This is not a time. And hold on a second. I got to walk through. So my office has these automatic lights. So I'm walking down right now. Y'all are going to walk with me. All right. Okay. So, um, this is not a time to stop engaging. This is not a time to pull back. It's not a time to disengage. Staying out of the, the fray or, you know, staying out of the game does nothing to um, help us as we work to take the country back. So, I, I know that people always ask, you know, why do you do these things? You know, they're just going to be a bunch of lies. I want them to sit there and see my face and see a face of defiance and a face that will not comply with their BS. I want them to know that there are millions of Americans behind this face with this massive helmet hair <laughs> that stand in defiance of this administration and that we are going to fight tooth and nail for our country. So that is why I do this. It is my job as a representative, not just for my constituents across this country. And you guys have heard me say, it, just because you don't, you can't vote for me doesn't mean I don't vote for you every day. I'm getting in an elevator. So if it cuts out, bear with me. Hold on. You guys are getting the full blown walk and talk with me. The service isn't great and there's so, so many people here that I'm sure the service is gonna be further interrupted, so just bear with me here. All right. So, I am headed to the Capitol. For those of you that are just tuning in, um, we are headed to the State of the Union and it is going to be painful to sit there and listen to this and listen to the nonsense and listen to the lies. But like I said, I firmly believe that we have to stand up and let people know that there are folks up in Washington fighting for them. That we, the little people, uh, the blue collar workers, the people like me who have lived paycheck to paycheck, who have been homeless, who have done all these things, people need to know that there are people like them up in Washington. And that's why we are going to not only be there in attendance tonight, but we are going to continue fighting even harder than we already have. So, whew, it is a heck of a night, y'all. Let me tell you, it has been a long day. I started at five o'clock this morning and yeah, it's been a long day. So right now I'm walking through the tunnels and um, all throughout the Capitol complex there are these underground tunnels and that allows us to get around pretty quickly because we always have committee meetings and we have votes and we have um, all these meetings in our offices. So the tunnels underground allow us to get from place to place um, a lot a lot more quickly than we normally could if we had to go above ground and across the street and whatnot. So yeah, in a tunnel right now. Like I said, service isn't great, so I hope I'm not cutting out. But a couple of things that I know um, you've been hearing about in the news um, beyond Ukraine is kind of what's next. And I think you're gonna be really happy to know that additional sanctions are coming. But along with that, we being Republicans, we have been working really, really hard to try to get um, the Keystone Pipeline restarted. And that's been a huge, huge issue. Hold on a second, there's a ton of security here. He was on hello, hello. To say that. Is there something going on tonight? Uh, Nothing. Okay. Uh, so as part of the, sorry, here's my, 
bajillion security members around and, and police officers. So, with the sanctions, with all of the aid that is being proposed, we are talking about restarting the Keystone Pipeline. And there has been many, many discussions in which the Democrats continue to push back, despite the fact that because of Biden canceling the Keystone Pipeline, because he canceled it, now we are actually helping fund Russia's invasion because his money and his ability to fund this war is based on oil sales. And because of the increased price of oil globally, he's making millions, I think at least 70 million additional a day because of the hiked up price, which is nuts. <sighs> really frustrating. It's really frustrating because common sense is not common up here. So that's one of the things on the negotiating table. We are working really, really hard to make sure that that happens. But like I said, Nancy Pelosi has not been receptive and their idea of solving high gas prices is to release more from our strategic reserve. So again, more short-sightedness coming from the left, but that's to be expected. And it's just, it's really frustrating. The other thing that I don't expect them to talk about tonight is addressing crime. I don't expect them to address opioids. You know, a couple weeks ago, I was on the House floor and Republicans had a bill called the Halt Fentanyl Act. Keep in mind that the number one cause of death in this country, it's not COVID, it's not climate change, it's opioids. And when I brought this up, this is what is so crazy, they um, flagged me on Facebook for this and said, that I was promoting false information about, about climate change. About climate change. So, one thing that I don't think that they'll address is the opioid crisis. Over 100,000 people that uh, have died just last year from opioids. I also don't expect them to address our crisis on the southwest border. In fact, today, Brandon Judd uh, and I met up for a brief second to talk about what's going on and uh, we'll be doing a town hall together to give you guys a first-hand account. Sorry, I'm trying to... There it is. <laughs> oh my god, the Democrat just stole my elevator. Hello. Hello. How are you? Good. How are you? All right, you too. How funny is that, guys? A Democrat comes in and steals my elevator. That would have been hilarious. I would have had to have done the Facebook Live with him in there. <laughs> um, but anyways, so we're I'm up in the elevator, heading into the Capitol building now. Um, but yeah, you're not going to hear any talk about that. I bet you we won't even address it. So. to get to where I need to go. Sorry, I'm going through like crazy security right now. Hey. And now, let's see. Here's where we are. This is Statuary Hall, just so you all know. All right, 
So, my advice to anybody who's debating whether or not they should watch it tonight, watch it. Watch the State of the Union. Watch the State of the Union because it is so important to know what the other side is talking about and what their narrative is. Tomorrow morning when you wake up, everyone's gonna be talking about the rebuttal. And quite frankly, we know that it's all a game. It's all, it's all a sham. But knowing what they say and knowing what their response is, that's part of the battle. Having an articulate, well thought out response, that's half the battle. And so watch what they say to me. Watch the body language. It's, it's gonna be really setting the stage and the tone for the next couple of months as we fight to take back our country. So pretty, pretty crazy. Um, I will be doing my best to live tweet from the floor. And of course I will do a reaction uh, Facebook Live after afterwards. So I hope you guys tune in. And um, again, while I know it's very disappointing, please just know that there's a lot of people in Washington that are like you and me. People that don't belong in the swamp, aren't from the swamp, came from regular working class families. So just have faith, keep the faith. And um, I'll go through your comments and answer what I can. And uh, yeah, nine o'clock, tune in. And I'll be on the house floor, as you can see, wearing red and white, a little sign of support for Ukraine, but keep your eyes peeled. And then afterwards, I'll go out and do a quick reaction. And um, let's go from there. Use this as fuel, guys. We need to use this as fuel. All right, take care. God bless, nine o'clock.